All right, well, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another exciting day in mathematics. How's everybody doing? Good? Yeah, there's a few. All right, good. Warm up number 34 is on your screen. Number one reads write the compound inequality shown by the graph. And we have a uh, graph in green on the number line going from negative one with a solid point going to the left with arrow all the way to the left. And then another graph going in red from positive two, solid point, going to the right with arrow to the right. For number two, it reads solve. We have four over C plus two plus five over C equals 21 over three C. And number three reads evaluate the function and graph using the domain negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. And they give us the function f of x equals negative two x plus one. So go ahead and copy that, get started, and then we'll get started in a little bit. If you finish early, uh, get a Cornell note ready. You do need a fair model. Today's going to go super, super fast, so stay with me, please. All right, copy and go. All right, for the sake of time, I'm going to go over the warm-up really quick. Here it goes. Number one, it says write the compound inequality shown by the graph. Now. When we covered compound inequalities, there were two types. There were ands and ors. Ands are the ones that overlap. Ors are the ones that go in opposite directions, which is this one, yes? This is an or. So that means I need to write first my inequality for this, and then a, another inequality for that, and write the word or in between. So I'm going to start with a green one. My dividing point is negative 1. So I'm going to write that here, negative 1. Oh. And this section right here, I'm just going to label x, okay? So, I'm going to pick another number from here for this section so I can compare the two numbers. So this is negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. I'm going to use negative 5. So what is negative 5 compared to negative 1? It's less than, yes? And since this is an open, I mean a close point, I put an equal sign. Okay. And then I write the word or. Next, let's go to this one. What's my dividing point? I start from my dividing point. This is 1. This is 2. So I write 2. All this region is x. So now I need to know uh, how to write my inequality symbol. So I'm going to pick another number, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to pick 6. So what is 2 compared to 6? Less than, and since it's a solid point, it's equal to. So now that I have my inequality, this is my what? Inequality. This is inequality notation. Can we write it in set notation? Yeah. Solution set of x such that, and then you close the notation. Have we been practicing this? Yes. Hopefully this is coming back again. Let's go to number two. For number two, we need to multiply times the common denominator. What is my common denominator? My common denominator is 3c, parentheses, c plus 2. Because if you look at C and 3C, to make them look alike, it has to be 3C. Then you multiply times that. So, next step, I'm going to rewrite this equation. And what do I write on the numerator? My LCD, because I'm multiplying times the numerator, yes? times 3c, c plus 2, times 3c, c plus 2, times 3c, c plus 2. All right, do we see giant ones? Yeah, c plus 2 right here. How about here? the C and the C. Does everybody see? <laughs> and how about this one? 3C and 3C. All right, let's simplify. What is 4 times 3C right here? That's 12C. Bring down the plus. What is 3 times 5? That's 15. Distribute that here. So that's 15C plus 30 equal 21, distribute that in here, that's 21C plus 42. 
and the rest is history, yeah? Can we combine like terms on the left side? Yes. That is 27C plus 30 equals 21C plus 42. Get all variables to one side, so I start with subtracting 21C from each side. That leaves us with 6C plus 30 equals 42. What do I do then? Minus 30. 6C equals 12. And last but not least, divide by 6. C equals 2. Does everybody see what I did there? That's pretty good, right? <laughs> Go to number 3. It says evaluate. Now, why do we evaluate? Because we need a domain. Well, here's my domain. I'm going to use this one. And we need a range, which is our what? F of X. Okay. So, so we can go faster and uh, fit the work here. I'm just going to do a two-step for each number. Yes? F of, what is my first number? Negative 2. Okay. Negative 2 equals negative 2 times negative 2 plus 1. F of negative 2 equals, what is negative 2 times negative 2? 4 plus 1, 5. That goes right there. Next, f of negative 1 equals negative 2 times negative 1 plus 1. f of negative 1. What is negative 2 times negative 1? 2 plus 1, 3. That goes right there. And the next one, f of 0 equals negative 2 times 0 plus 1. f of 0 equals 0 plus 1, which is... Oh, 0 plus 1, which is 1. That goes right there. So, I said before that in order to not do more work, if you see that you already did three of them, and you see a pattern, and you can fill it in without doing the work, take over the next two numbers without doing any work, just looking at the pattern. Okay. All right. I saw Carlos uh, making signs to Noor, and they they were saying in signs negative one and negative three. Yes. Pretty much, yeah. All right. Let's cross this. We got uh, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. For my y, I have all the way up to positive 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And on my negative, I have negative 3. 1, 2, 3. All right. So negative 2, 5. Negative 1, 3. Uh, 0, 1. 1, negative 1 and 2, negative 3. And then from left to right, connect your points. There you go. Are we doing with this? Yes? Okay. All right. Copy the agenda for today. Agenda, warm-up number 34. Today we're getting into our our most uh, expected uh, session, which is Intro to functions. And tonight's home place place Q all only. I think there's only like 17 problems. So, only. <laughs> right? <laughs> all right, if you're done, make sure you uh, get a Cornell note ready. You do need a fair model. And could I get the last person on each row? Go get uh, two graph papers for your row, for each person. Two graph papers. Graph papers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, your Nearpod code for uh, 
In case you missed something from the session, there it is. Also, I'm including the play sheet in there for tonight's home play. YR 92L. YR 92L. YR 92L. All right. So, last night's home play were these 10 problems. You're going to turn that in on Canvas before the end of the day, not right now. I want to make time for the session because we have some stuff to cover, so make sure you turn that in. Yes? And tonight's home play, once again, tonight's home play is play sheet Q, different notations of functions. And like I said, I think there's only 17 problems, something like that. So you'll be fine. Shall we? All right. Copy your objective and your Cornell notes, bottom left. You do need a fair model once again. And it reads, I can identify functions. I can identify functions. Copy that. I'll give you some time to get ready. Okay, all ready? Here we go. Here we go. Let's go. So, today we're going to get into functions. But before I do, I'm going to clarify some uh, vocabulary that I've been using, that we've been seeing from the beginning of the school year. But I just want to refresh your memory to make sure that you understand what I'm talking about as we go through these sessions. Okay? So, writing utensils down, look up to the screen. Here it goes. Today, like I said, we're going to identify functions. Before we do, let's talk about ordered pairs. By now you should know that an ordered pair is a coordinate, yes? Such as 2, 3. 2, 3 is an ordered pair. And that ordered pair has two values, an x value and a y value. The one on the left is x, so 2 is x, yes? And the one on the right is y, so that means 3 is y. So far so good, yes? All right. So, if I was to put together a bunch of ordered pairs, write them next to each other, without any order, just write them next to each other, that's what we call a relation. Stay with me, please. Here it goes. If I was to write a bunch of ordered pairs together, without any order, they're just together, that's called a relation. For example, 2, 3, 0, 0, 103, negative 5, 7, negative 2, negative 3. That's a relation because they're all together. So far, good, yes? Kind of like, uh, you know, it doesn't have any order, so, but they are all together. It's kind of like you and some cousins, right? You have cousins, and you get along with some cousins better than other cousins. Okay, that's an, a relation. All right. However, within that relation, we can talk about domain and range. Domain, we said, is all the what? X values. So look at that relation, and you're just paying attention. And tell your neighbor the domain of that relation. Very good. 2, 0, 100, negative 5, negative 2, which is what? All the x values. So what if I asked you to write it in set notation? So you would write those values, however, look. In what order? From least to greatest. So far so good, yes? So now that we know what domain is, this is just to confirm what we've been talking about, we know what the range is, right? All the y values. So look at the original relation. Can you picture the y values, yes, or the range? Yes, Mr. Q, it's 3, 0, 3, 7, negative 3. So if we write that in set notation, what would be the first value that you write? How are your neighbor? Yeah, negative 3, and then 0, and then 3, and then 
seven, because we don't write repeats, yes? Only one. Okay. Are we clear with this, yes? Okay. The second thing I want to talk about is the different types of ways that we're going to write a relation and function. There's three ways. On your paper, if you have space, copy this, please. We're going to represent it using a table, using a graph, and using a mapping diagram. And I'll show you how to use the mapping diagram. Well, I'll show you how to use all, all of them. But we've been using already a table and a graph. You're like, where do I write that, Mr. Q? Anywhere you can fit it on your notes. So, while you're copying that, I'm going to give you a relation. The relation given, I'm going to write it over here on top, to four, comma, negative six, negative three, comma, and eight, ten. Is this a relation? Yes, because it's a bunch of order pairs together. Yes. All right, let's represent this on my table, or on our table. What do I write first? Two, four, okay. Next, negative six, negative three. And last, eight, ten. All right, Ms. Q, this is a piece of cake. I know. All right. Let's represent that on our graph. What's our first order pair, our first point? Two, four. Two, four. What's the next one? Negative six, negative three. Negative six of x, negative three of y, right there. What's the last point? Eight, ten. Eight of x, ten of y, and there it is. Do we need to connect those points? No. That's just representing that relation there. Are we doing good? Yeah. All right. Now look at the mapping diagram. Look up. For the mapping diagram, I'm going to look at my table, or I can look at my relation and do this. What's the difference between the table and the mapping diagram when I write my x values? Talk it over your neighbor. What's the only difference? Everybody see it? Yes? On the mapping diagram, it has to be in order from least to greatest. Same thing with the range. So what do I write first? Negative 3, 4, and 10. Now, why is this called a mapping diagram? Because we map the x values to what they correspond to on the y using an arrow. So negative 6 corresponds to what? Negative 3, so I draw an arrow pointing to that number. Next, I draw an arrow from 2 to 4 and an arrow from 8 to 10. So you're like, Mr. Q, this is silly. It's too simple. I know. It's very simple. The only thing, it starts getting a little bit more sketchy when we add more points. So I'm just showing you the basics right now, okay? All right, from one to five, how come people feel with the three different representations? Yeah, five, 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 yes. Okay. All right, so we talked about ordered pairs. We talked about range. Domain, we talked about a uh, uh, relation, a relation of a whole set of points, yes? We good with that, yes? All right, so now let's open up a prayer model and let's start with what functions are. Ready? Here we go. Function. What is a function? A function is a relation that assigns exactly one output value for each input value. A function is a relation that assigns exactly one output value for each input value. 
A function is a relation that assigns exactly one output value for each input value. A function is a relation that assigns exactly one output value for each input value. Do we know what a relation is? Yeah, it's a bunch of order pairs, yes? Let me give you one. Negative 2, 3, negative 1, 4, 0, 5, 1, 6, negative 2, 3. All right, I'll elaborate more on that one, but let's copy what functions look like. We started off uh, two variable equations sometime back when we were solving for y, and they were like y equals 2x plus 1. But in function notation, it's what? f of x equals 2x plus 1. That is correct. Also, not too long ago, I gave you guys equations that look like this. y equals x squared minus 1. But now that we're getting into functions, how do I write it? f of x equals x squared minus 1. Yes. Here goes a, a new one for some of you. y equals 2 to the exponent of x plus 1. How do we write that? f of x equals 2 to the exponent of x uh, plus 1. And we're going to get into all of those. And just to show you the graph of those functions, here it goes. The graph of this one is a linear, it's just a straight line. The graph of this one we already did not too long ago, remember we saw it by graphing, it was a parabola, like so. And the graph for this one, this is known as an exponential function. So it starts slow and all of a sudden it just skyrockets like so. We're going to be looking at all those plus many more. So. However, let's talk about this relation right here and why it's a function. Writing utensils down, look up to the screen. Here it goes. In order for us to test why this is a function, you need to ask yourself a question. Here's the most important question. Do any of the x values repeat? So then you scan through it and you identify it. Okay. Do any of them repeat? Yes. Negative 2 is over here as well. So to check it, I'm going to make a mapping diagram. Okay, here's my mapping diagram. X, Y. So this is negative 2 corresponds to 3. How about this one? Negative, wait a minute. I already have it there. What does that mean, Mr. Q? That for every there's exactly one output value for each input value. You're like, still not too clear for me, Mr. Q. Clear it up for me. Here it goes. An easy way of looking at this is as follows. Ready? Let's say I say, okay, guys, come forward, buy a row, and I'm going to give you guys a dollar, and we're going to go buy a drink from the vending machine. So then everybody starts coming, and I give you guys a dollar, and we go out to get a, a drink, right? So here you go. So, Juliana, what's your drink that you're going to get? Arizona green tea. An Arizona green tea. So she, she goes, puts her dollar, she presses the button of Arizona green tea, what should come out? Arizona green tea. All right. So far so good, yeah? Lewis, what drink are you getting? Which color? Blue. All right, so then Lewis puts his dollar in, presses the blue Gatorade, what comes out? A blue Gatorade. Philip, what are you getting? A water. A water. So then you put the dollar, prices on the water, you get the water. Okay. And Raymond, what are you getting? A water. Raymond puts his dollar in, presses the water button. What should come out? A water. So that means if a Gatorade comes out, is that machine functioning correctly? No. So look at the, look at this uh, ordered pair right here. If I press negative two, what came out? Three. If I press it again, what should come out? Three. That's how we can check if this is a function. Does that make sense? All right. So now let me show you a non-example to clarify this. Look at this. Don't copy it yet. Look up. 
What was the question? Do any of the x values repeat? Okay, tell your neighbor why this one is not a function and why this one is a function. Talk it over your neighbors, please. All right, who saw that for this one, the negative 2, you press it, what comes out? A 3. You press it again, what comes out? A 3. It is functioning correctly. Okay, let me go here. Negative 2 gives me what? 3. You press it again, negative 2, what comes out? So it's not functioning correctly. That's why this is not a function. Now let me show you with a mapping diagram how that looks. Negative 2, 3. Okay. Negative 2, I don't need to write it again. There it is. But the other one is what? How many arrows coming out of the negative 2? Two? 2. But what does this say? Exactly one output for each input. Copy this piece so like that you remember how to check. So, one last thing for a non-example. Let me show you a graph. I showed you the graph of these. Let me show you a graph that is not a function. Ready? Here it goes. Now, let me zoom in. The graph is the red parallelogram right here. Okay, I'm focusing on the red parallelogram. You guys see it? Okay. Mr. Peter Hawk, can we check to see if that one's not a function? Because it's in the none example. Those of you that were with me uh, before, I said use your pencil from far away and see if your pencil touches in two spots. That's known as a vertical line test, and it goes like this. I'm going to draw a line straight down, and if it touches at two places, that graph, it's not a function. Does it touch here? Yes. Does it touch here? Yes. So question, what is the x value at those two points? Here's 0, negative 1, negative 2, it's at negative 3. What is the y value here? And over here, negative 2. So how many values for this x value? 2. That's why it's not a function. Kind of like the mapping diagram we just did, yes? Okay. All right, copy this, just copy the uh, parallelogram and then just draw a line like that so you remember to do the vertical line test. You don't need to copy the X and the Y, uh, the coordinate plane. All right, hashtag. Write these two down, hashtag. Functions are relations. What else? Hashtag one output for each input. Exactly one output for each input. All right. So, so far up to right now, we've been practicing, and I've been giving you already some work of what we're covering today, and we got to two notations. We've been talking about writing inequality. That's inequality notation. And we've been talking about set notation. Remember, solution set of x and so on and so forth. That's set notation. So we already have, have down two of them. Today we're going to add one more notation. Now earlier I was uh, I was starting with the other classes that notation, and I was excluding certain things to cover it tomorrow. But today I'm going to give you the whole thing to see how you respond to that. Okay, here it goes. So that notation is called interval notation. Don't copy this. Just pay attention. An interval is part of a number line without any breaks. Or I could put it to you like this. It's part of a section that is only included within that section. For example, let's say I said from Miguel's row all the way to Christian's row, they're going to stay for detention with me right now during lunch. 
That is an interval. You're like, that's not fair, Mr. Q. All right, fine. Then I'll include everybody in the interval. Anyways, you get the idea, right? Only a certain section is known as an interval. Now, there's two types of intervals. Look up, please. There's finite interval. That means that the two endpoints are included, and the brackets that we use are these, that they are included in the interval. There's the other kind of those as infinite interval. That means that it's unbounded or that it's not included on the ends. And what do we use for the symbol? We use a parenthesis. Once again, unbounded for infinity or that it's not included. So with that said, we're going to do some practice right now. I'm going to give you some graph. I'm going to give you a table to copy. You need a, almost a whole page, so turn your page over. Copy this table, please. It's got five columns. Example Q. It's got inequality notation, set notation, interval notation, description of interval, and type of interval. And I'm going to give you five, uh, four graphs. There's one graph here on the number line starting with negative three with an open point and shaded all the way to the right. The second graph on the number line starts at positive four, solid point, and shaded to the left. Another graph on the number line with an open point at negative 2 and an open point at 5 and it's shaded in between those two points. And the last one, also on the number line, from negative 5, solid point, negative 1, open point, and shaded in between. Copy that and then we'll get started. I'll give you some time. Copy and... Alright. So, writing utensils down, you'll finish copying a little bit the rest. So for right now, you should have your five columns, and you should have this first graph, yes? Okay, writing utensils down, look up to the screen. I'm going to go by it step by step. And the first two should be a piece of cake, because we've been doing these on the warm-ups, and we've been doing this from the beginning. So here we go, look up to the screen. All right, I need to write my inequality. I always start with a dividing point. What's the dividing point right here? Negative 3. So far, so good, yes? Okay. All this shaded region is represented by the variable x. Okay. So now, to find out how I'm going to write my inequality symbol, I need to compare the negative 3 to one of the other numbers. I'm going to compare it to 4. So negative 3, what is that compared to 4? Greater than or less than? Less than. That is correct. Now, since this is an open point, I don't write an equal sign. So up to right there, we're good, yes? However, from this point forward, whenever you write your inequality or your set notation, I want it first with a variable, starting with a variable, and then your inequality symbol. For example, I'm going to take this, pay attention to this part, and all I'm going to do, I'm going to rotate it. So I can have x and then the symbol and then the number, so watch. I'm going to bring x over here. The arrow is going to point away from x, and it's going to point towards negative 3. Did everybody see that? Yes? Can I write this? And by the way, this is inequality notation. Do we know how to write this in set notation? Yeah, solution set of x such that x greater than negative 3. All right, before you copy, look up to the screen. Here goes the most important notation. This is the new notation. We said we're going to use interval notation. It's either parentheses or bracket. Parentheses for anything that is not included or that has an infinite symbol. So you're saying, what does that mean, Mr. Q? Well, where does it start here? At negative 3. Okay? And then we shade, and it keeps going. That's what the arrow means, yes? Does it ever stop? No. It means that it goes to positive infinity. So I write positive infinity. You're like, what? Yeah, because it keeps going. So, since it keeps going, we put a parenthesis because we never include infinity. Why? Because we can't catch up to infinity. However, look at negative 3. Is this a closed point? No. Also, whenever you have a point, even though it stops there, since it's not included, you're going to put a parenthesis. Anything that's infinity or something that's not included, you put parentheses. Copy that, please. Then we're going to write in words what it means and what type of interval. Copy that. All right. 
So, what does this mean in words? It means that everything that's included in between is known as all real numbers. What else? Greater than, greater than negative 3. Let's see. Let's see if that makes sense. Here's negative 3 and all real numbers greater than negative 3. Yes. There it is. Since this one has an infinite sign right there, this is known as an infinite interval because it keeps going. Let's do the second one together. Ready? All right. So let's see if we got it. How do we start? We start with our dividing point. What's my dividing point? 4. And this shaded region is x. Okay? So I'm using 4. Pick any number from this side to compare it to 4. I'm going to pick 0. What is 0 compared to 4? Less than. Yeah. So 0 is less than 4. However, look at this point. Is it included? Is it a solid point? Yeah, so it's an equal sign. Can write a set notation? Yes. Solution set of x such that x less than or equal to 4. There you go. All right. So let's see. Here's that 4, and this side it keeps going to what? It's an arrow, so it keeps going to negative infinity. So my interval is going to start at negative infinity, comma. Where does it stop? At 4. Can we start with infinity? Can we ever catch up to infinity? No, so it's a parenthesis. Do we include 4 in our set? Look at the solid point. Yes, it's a solid point, so now we use a bracket. Bracket is for the end point that is included. How do we write that in words? All real numbers greater than or equal to 4. Oh, my bad. Less than. I'm sorry. Less than. Yeah, I did that to see if you guys were paying attention. Less than or equal to 4. And does this have an infinite? Yes, yeah, so this is known as an infinite interval. So far, so good, yes? So, inequality notation, set notation, interval notation. Let's do the next one together. Here we go. What is my dividing point? Negative 2, but now we have another one, which is what? 5. Does this look familiar? Yes, this is an and compound inequality. So what would I write in between? X, arrows to which side? To the left. Are these open or closed points? Open, so we don't put equal sign. All right, let's write our set notation, solution set of x such that negative 2 less than x less than 5. All right, so now here we have two different ends. We have negative 2 and 5. Question, is negative 2 included? No, so what symbol would I use? Parentheses. How about 5? Is 5 included? No, so parentheses. What does this mean in uh, words? All real numbers between what? Negative 2 and 5, semicolon, not including what? Negative 2 and 5, yes. Because they're open points. That's what the open point means, that they're not included in the solution. Now, look at this. Are there any infinite signs? No, that means this is a finite interval. Finite. See if you can do the last one by yourself. Write me the uh, inequality notation, set notation, interval notation, and what it means. I'll give you some time. Hurry up, please. Uh, 20 seconds. Copy and go. <laughs> 
All right, for the sake of time, here it goes. What are my dividing points? Negative 5 and negative 1. X in between, arrows to the left. However, look at this one. Is this a solid point? Yeah, so it has an equal sign. Is this a solid point? No, so it stays like that. Solution set of X such that negative 5 less than or equal to X less than negative 1. Interval from negative 5 to negative 1. Question, what kind of symbol do I use for negative 5? Bracket because it's included. How about for negative 1? Parentheses because it's not included. All right, so then what does this say? All real numbers between negative 5 and negative 1, semicolon, not including what? Negative 1. That is correct. And this is a finite. All right. Three notations. Show me your opinion. I'll come to your with those. Yeah. 5, 5, 4, 5, 4, 5. Yeah. Okay. So let's, uh, let's get rid of this kitty stuff here. Yeah? Get yourself a big graph paper in front of you, please. It's going to go pretty fast, so stay focused. Here it goes. Look up to the screen. Ready? Don't copy this, just follow along. I'm going to shade right now with my highlighter a certain section of the coordinate plane. Ready? Look up. Do you guys see it? All right. Now, I want you to focus on the x-axis. Between what x values did I highlight right there with red or pink, whatever that color is? Tell your neighbor, between what x values? Between what? Two and eight. So my, can you picture an inequality between two and eight? You're like, oh yeah, yeah, I think I can picture it, yes. So that would be my domain, because it's all x's, right? Let me show you another one. So you never the domain for that between where and where? From negative 3 all the way to what? 3, yes, and we always read it from left to right. Look at this one. What's the domain between what and what? Negative 9 and 4. Okay, but if you notice, I'm shading up and down from left to right. Does everybody see that? Okay, now let me show you the range. Look up to the screen. Now I'm going to focus my eyes on the y-axis. And the range, I always read it from the bottom to the top. From where to where? From the bottom to the top. So you can barely tell there on, your, on our screen. Let me use the highlighter to highlight a little bit more. And it goes from here. And it stops at about right there. So what would be our range from where to where? From 1 all the way to what? 9. That is correct. Look at this one. What would be our range for that one? From negative 3 to what? 1. Okay, so on your big graph paper, copy this point. Negative 5, negative 2. This is our last example. And it's going to connect to another point at 7, 4. 7, 4. What's that? No, there it is. All right. So we're going to find the domain. So I'm going to start shading. Get your highlighter. Start shading where it starts from left to right. And it should shade from negative 5 all the way to what? 7. Do you guys see it? From negative 5 to 7. So basically, my domain is from negative 5 to 7. Are we there? So watch. I'm going to write an inequality for my domain. Ready? 
So what do I do? I write my dividing points, negative 5 and 7. Since it's the domain, what do I write in between? X, arrows to the what? Left, and since there are solid points, I put an equal sign. This is my what? Inequality. Can I write that in set notation? Yes. Solution set, negative 5, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 7, close set. Can I write that in interval notation? Yes, Andrew, interval. What do I write? Negative 5, 7 with brackets. That is correct. Can you find me the range using that method? Watch. Where do we start? Negative 2. Where does it end? At 4. So that means we would have negative 2, 4 with y in between. And the rest is history, yes? I'll stop right there. Uh, grab yourself a play sheet on your way out. It's on top of the cart. Have a good one, guys. There is tutoring today. Be there or be elsewhere. Bye.